In the next few videos, we're going to be looking at examples where we have nonlinear constrained optimization problems. And we'll start out with the one that we used to uh, introduce the optimization topic altogether. Uh, we're trying to design a beam. I think it's 10 feet long, has to support 500 pounds on the end, and it can only deflect one inch. We already decided we want to use a hollow cylindrical steel bar, and so the only things we have to uh, determine here or what's the best values of an outer diameter and an inner diameter. Uh, we know that uh, the deflection uh, equation we get from mechanics and materials, and because we want it to be less than or equal to one inch, that becomes one of our constraints. Um, we want to minimize the amount of steel that we use, both from a cost and weight uh, standpoint. So there's the equation for the volume of the beam. And we have one other constraint. We said that uh, you know we don't want it to be such that the outer diameter is huge, and yet our um, our thickness is um, you know um, thousands of an inch or so, so that you could dent it very easily. So we want to make sure that the wall thickness is at least an eighth of an inch. That'll make it easier to find um, uh, tubes that are uh, already made to standard dimensions as well. Okay, so here's our we set up our optimization problem. We want to minimize the volume subject to these constraints, deflection less than or equal to an inch, thickness greater than or equal to an eighth of an inch, and because mathematically we may get uh, values of D that are less than zero, physically that's not possible, so we want to make sure that both of those are greater than or equal to zero. And we know in Solver that those last two constraints, we don't have to enter them as shown here. If we just check the box that says make the unconstrained variables non-negative, then that will, um, that will accomplish uh, adding the constraints that D and D uh, are both greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so this is how we would set this up in Excel. Uh, I didn't, I'm not going to do this in Excel, but uh, some of the later examples will step through together. But for now, we'll just show how this works. So I've got D and D, my guess values. So I'm guessing 5 inches outer diameter, 3 inches inner diameter, um, the length, the weight, and the modulus are constants. So we put those in. And now we have an equation for the volume. Okay. Next, we add a formula for the deflection kind of that long equation there. And then the thickness is just one half of the difference in the outer and the inner diameter. So now we've got all our formulas set up. And now we're ready to call up solver. Remember what we want to do. We want to minimize the volume by changing the diameters. And so that's the first thing we do here in solver. We set the objective function is going to be the volume, cell E1. We want to minimize that volume by changing these two valuable variables right here in B1 and B2, the outer and the inner diameter. But we have to add some constraints to that as well. So we click on Add right here, and a dialog box comes up where we add the constraints. The first one is the deflection is less than or equal to one inch. So for the cell reference, we click on, this, on the cell where we are calculating the deflection, with our pull-down box here, we make it less than or equal to and add our value of one inch. Okay, We can click Add and add the second one. And this one is that the thickness, which is in this cell, uh, E5, is greater than or equal to, again, use the pull-down box to, to get greater than or equal to, one-eighth of an inch, 0.125. So here's our solver setup. We want to minimize the volume by changing outer and inner diameter with the constraints deflection less than or equal to an inch, thickness greater than or equal to an eighth of an inch, and our two independent variables both positive. And so now all we got to do is click solve and there's our answer. So if we rounded this off the outer diameter would be 6 inches, the inner diameter 5.75, so that we could find a standard uh, size. Okay, now we're going to do a few more in the next two videos. 
and um, these are going to be more engineering related problems and so before you go to these videos go ahead and download the Excel file that's called optimization examples and that'll have uh, five pages five sheets within that workbook and a lot of the uh, equations that you need inputs are already entered there so all we have to concentrate on is how to run the solver to uh, come up to optimum values and so that'll be the next time